Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and a uh, bit of a... Like, I'm super sleep-deprived right now, because uh, I was very impatient. I got very excited. I have liquid nitrogen, so I got very excited to try bench the 6900 XT. And the 6900 XT Red Devil Ultimate did what it already did for somebody else once before, and grenaded its own VRM at idle. Of all things, yes. Sitting on the desktop in between benchmark runs, fiddling, you know, set, setting up for like the next attempt at Fire Strike Ultra. Short circuit protection goes off on the power supply. Hmm, I wonder what that would be. My initial thought was maybe there was water in the PCIe slot, because that wouldn't be too bad. Because um, that just means you need to take the, to take the system apart and, you know, let it dry out. But I took the system apart and there was no short circuit on the motherboard. Um... And there was a short circuit on the graphics card. More specifically, there was a short circuit from 12 volts to vCore. Because when a VRM dies, its one and only goal in life is to destroy whatever it is supposed to be powering. So that no one else can replace it. That's, that's the one dream of every power stage is that in death it can destroy whatever it's meant to power. So that it can't be replaced by a new power, different, different, different power stage. Um... Sometimes they succeed, sometimes they don't. Unfortunately, I don't know if this one succeeded to, you know, kill my 6900 XT here, because the VRM controller is uh, very upset about the fact that instead of uh, 14 phases, it only has 13 attached to it right now. Um, and since it's very upset about that, it won't let the VRM turn on. So I have memory voltage, I have SOC voltage, I have v memory controller, I have every voltage except vCore. V-Core is not turning on because V-Core has the blown power stage and, well, it doesn't have the blown power stage. The power stage is gone. I've already removed it, figured out which power stage it is, removed it. So now the only issue is get a replacement power stage. Thing is, TDA21472s aren't exactly easy to buy. And if you're wondering why this video isn't very dynamic, it's because I, I don't, like, I'm sleep deprived. I'm not exactly the high effort for videos at the best of times. So you're just going to get to stare at this right here. I, I guess I could have laid the card down flat, but there's not much really to see. It's a, well, there's Plasti Dip on it, but I've peeled a lot of it off in order to get do the troubleshooting process and figure out what the hell went wrong with it. Um, and yeah, I blew a power stage at idle. And now I need to find a source of TDA21472s, which isn't a parts supplier because... Uh, I saw some of the back orders are for like 56 weeks. 56 weeks. That's like a year for power stages. I'm not waiting a year to try repair this thing. So the alternative option is that I buy a high-end dead, ideally. I don't want to buy a new one. Well, basically, I would have to buy a motherboard with TDA21472 power stages. There, that's, that's the solution to this problem. You buy a motherboard with TDA21472 uh, power stages. Actually, now that I think of it, I do have a motherboard that I'm not really doing anything with that has TDA21472s. I could steal one off of there. If it doesn't work, I could try put it back. I mean, like, if it if the card doesn't work, I can put it back on. And I can call it good soldering practice. Or at least tell myself that so that I don't, don't feel like I wasted time and put unnecessary thermal stress on a, uh, on a power stage from a functional motherboard. I think it's on TDA21472, so I'll have to check, but... Okay, so maybe I do have a source of TDA21472s. Not very many of them, it's an ITX board, but... Man, 1800 pound GPUs are stupid. Like, they really are stupid. I could have had so many, like, memory kits, CPUs, motherboards, other graphics cards. I could have gone on eBay and had, like, five 1080 Ti's. Actually, more than. Okay, no, not five. That's too many. Three to four 1080 Ti's for the price of this stupid thing that decided to kill itself. And I am going to stand by the statement that it decided to kill itself because 
the power stage that blew up was in like a rather dry area of the PCB. There was other places on, on the PCB where I was like, whoa, there's kind of a lot of condensation here. I hope that doesn't cause any issues. And then that a power stage that's just like under some of the best insulation of any power stage on the entire board. Yeah, that one decides to kick the bucket at idle of all times. Now, admittedly, I did remove the overcurrent protection on the VRM, so maybe that has something to do with it. Um, hard to say that, like, that's hard to test, though. And by oh, remove the overcurrent protection, I mean I set it to 999, which on a 14 power stage, that's still not that high. That shouldn't blow a power stage unless it gets overloaded by incorrect power management. Like, this is a 14 power stage, 70 amps more power stages, okay? We're at idle. Oh, wait, 999 is technically outside of 14 times 70, because 14 times 70 is 980 amps. And I was at 999, which is 999 amps. Is it really because I maxed out? Unfortunately, I can't test that. You know, like that, that idea of like, oh, it's because I set the current limit too high. Um... And you might be like, Buildzoid, why did you remove the overcurrent protection? And my response to you is very simple. Didn't like, didn't you make a video about how overcurrent? Yes, yes, I know overcurrent protection is very important. Um, the thing is, I did like pre-testing on this card, where I was monitoring all the VRM operating temperatures, and it was running very reasonable temperatures at like very high levels of power draw. So I figured there would be no need for the overcurrent protection to, well, you know, function because it was never going to run into a scenario where it would blow up um, within what I was doing. So I just sort of set the overcurrent protection to an arbitrarily high value so that I wouldn't have to worry about it lowering bench, like causing the card to randomly shut down or anything, which... You know, looking back at that decision-making process, that's dumb. You should raise the overcurrent protection after you trip it, not before you trip it. You know? Just... Because if you don't have to raise it, don't raise it. You're much safer for it if you don't mess with the overcurrent protection unless you have to. And if you have to, well, now you know that you're entering very dangerous territory. Um, and you can't be too surprised when things die, but still it died at idle. It's not like it died running Firestrike Ultra. It's not like it died running any kind of crazy 3D benchmark. It died on the Windows desktop, so I'm still sort of leaning towards buggy power management. Possibly aided by my removal of the overcurrent protection, but I'm still leading, leaning heavily towards the whole buggy power management thing. Um... I really don't think it was condensation, because, yeah, that doesn't make sense to me, like, not with the way I had the card insulated, and also not really with the way it failed. Like, I can't really think of a way that the high side, like, why, why would, like, if the PWM line got shorted, you would assume the power, well, would it? The thing is, these power stages have, like, a bunch of... Over these are smart power stages. They have a bunch of protections built in. They really shouldn't be blowing up or dying. It didn't blow up. It died. And, and yeah, so... It just up and died. It didn't even, like... It just tripped the overcurrent protection. So, yeah, the HX-1200... Uh, the Corsair HX-1200, like, if the core survived, then that power supply... Like, I... Faith in that power supply greatly increased. <laughs> If it saved my 6900 XT. Anyway, this video is kind of going nowhere. I think I'm going to steal a TDA21472 off of uh, off of that motherboard that I was thinking of. Because in the grand scheme of things, what would I rather have? An ITX board or a 6900 XT? 6900 XT. Uh... So, oh, if I repair this thing, I'm not taking it on LN2 again. Um, like, I don't know why it, why that power stage popped. Um, the card is a nightmare to run on liquid nitrogen. Just fun fact. It's, it is a nightmare to run this thing on liquid nitrogen. 
Man, the thing is, I can't even, like, freaking... What am I going to do with this stupid thing? Like, I'd feel bad selling it to anyone just on the basis of, like, it had a power stage replaced by Buildzoid on it. And also, I had to desolder, like, a bunch of inductors in order... Partially desolder a bunch of inductors to figure out which power stage actually kicked the bucket in the first place. Um, so... Yeah, it's like, so if I repair it... Well, I'm not running it on LN2 again, because... Like, it's a pain. It's really annoying to run. It goes through LN2 extremely fast. It's buggy as hell. There's, like, there's a weird glitch where the card runs at, like, half the frequency it should be running at. Um, which might have been triggered... Well... No, because, like, that sometimes went away on, on its own. Like, that that's the thing. is like, there's a bunch of weird behavior on this card that I've never seen before. Um... It cold, it cold boot bugs at minus 75 degrees. It black screens at minus... Seven, uh, like, if you're in Windows, it'll black screen at minus 75. If you're in, like, the BIOS or something, you can go way lower temperatures than that. I don't actually know what is the minimum temperature you can run this card at because the drivers... Well, you can't boot at less than minus 75, and also the drivers don't function at less than minus 75. So that doesn't really, you know... Yeah, like... Ugh. Should have bought a 3090. Or a 3080 Ti. Those cost about the same as this stupid thing does. And all I'd have to do on that is remove a bunch of fucking shunt resistors. Instead of having to source a smart power stage. Because the VRM decided to kill itself at idle. Of all things. And I... Yeah, I'll end the video here. I mean, it's over 10 minutes long, so at this point, I'm, I hope you left at 5 minutes. <laughs> I really hope you didn't spend 11 minutes, 12 minutes now, you know, watching this, because what a waste of freaking time. Um, I guess other than maybe functioning as a warning for other people to, I don't know. Like, I don't even know what you're supposed to do about it. I have no idea why it blew up. I guess don't touch the overcurrent protection settings on, on a Red Devil Ultimate. Just just don't. Um, that's, that's my, like, and I'm still not convinced that it's the overcurrent protection, but that, like, eh, maybe... I like I would I'd love like I'd love for there to be something that I could learn from this. Right? There. That's yes. Like I would love to learn why. Why did that power stage explode? What did I do wrong if I did anything wrong? But I have no idea. This is actually I think the first time I had a card die on LN2 that wasn't intentional. Yeah. <laughs> there was a GT730 or something that wasn't performing the way it was, like, that wasn't performing very well. I got super upset with it and gave it 2.1 volts. The VRM survived that. The core didn't. Um, the core died at 2.1 volts. 2 volts tends to... Like, it's weird how DDR4 memory survives 2 volts, and then, like, most other modern hardware, you give it 2 volts and it just gets completely demol... Like, it's gone. Very, very quickly. Um, so, yeah. That's it for this video. Sorry for wasting your time. If you'd like to have your time wasted more, you can subscribe. There's also a like button if for some reason you think this wasn't a waste of time. And, uh, you know, so you can let me know. But if you do think it was a waste of time, there's a dislike button, but I assume you've already left. Uh, what else is there? Right. Um, I feel kind of terrible saying this after, you know, what with this, this right here, but I do have a Patreon. It won't go towards any more high-end GPUs because they cost too much to replace when they inevit, like, when they decide to randomly kill themselves. Um... Or at least it won't go to any more current-gen high-end GPUs. I'm not against getting older ones, because those are significantly cheaper. Um, anyway. Well, that's it for the video, so... 
sorry for wasting your time and goodbye.